So is this what a Samsung Galaxy Ultra phone is supposed to be like? Uh, so the S22 Ultra was a massive disappointment for me last year. It was slow, jittery, and just a complete waste of money. So the S23 Ultra has quite a big task ahead of it, particularly when you consider that I'm normally an iPhone guy. Is this better than this? And can I recommend the S23 Ultra to people in the UK? Let's find out. Before I get started, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is Pitaka. Now, as lovely as the sky blue colour is on this S23 Ultra, it's a bit of a slippery beast. So, I need a decent case for it, and thankfully, Pitaka has the fantastic Mag EZ3. It's the thinnest and lightest case for the S23 Ultra. It goes on super quick like that, it comes off very easy as well, and I think it looks rather lovely. It's just 0.95mm thin, weighs just 225 grams, and it's made from rare 600D aramid fibre. I really like this simple, minimalist design that Pataka tends to use for these cases. I think they look really smart, as well as being, like I say, very, very tough. And thanks to a vacuum forming process, it creates a non-slip texture, which means you don't drop it. But it does have a massive Massive trick up its sleeve, which is the fact that it has MagSafe magnets built into this case. So even though it's that thin, they've somehow managed to get magnets in here, which basically turns your S23 Ultra into a MagSafe compatible phone. So for instance, if you've got a MagSafe compatible battery charger like this one from Pitaka, it will attach to the back of your S23 Ultra, and it has the exact same you know, toughness that you get from MagSafe on the iPhone, and it means you can use your phone, your S23 Ultra, with a range of MagSafe devices. And that means you can use your phone with fantastic accessories like the MagEZ slider, which is this kind of spinning stand for your phone, which doubles as a charging station as well, but also their fantastic car mount. These cases are absolutely fantastic for the S23 Ultra. I'll leave a link to the case, to the spinning MagEZ slider, and also the car mount in the description, and thanks very much to Pitaka for sponsoring this video. Let's start with performance, and if you know me by now, you know that I don't do benchmarks, particularly when it comes to phones, I just don't really see the point. However, the S22 Ultra last year was measurably rubbish, but only if you bought it in this country. And the reason for that is that in the UK, for some reason, Samsung gave us the Exynos version, which is their their silicon, basically, it's their chip, and it's just utterly terrible. Whereas in other regions, they got the proper Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. The good news is, in fact, the brilliant news is, that the S23 Ultra, no matter where you buy it in the world, will have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is brilliant. And that's the biggest thing about this phone. If you buy it in the UK and certain of the countries that had the Exynos, you get a proper version of it. And if you're in the States, for instance, you may be thinking, why is he making such a big deal about this? But honestly, if you spent 1200 quid on the S22 Ultra last year, you would have been very disappointed. Whereas this one, is completely different. As soon as you get this thing out of the box and get it set up, it feels like, well, it feels like an iPhone. I know Samsung fans won't like me saying that, but again, the S22 Ultra didn't feel like an iPhone last year. It was sluggish. This is super, super fast. It's a joy to use. That is all I'm gonna say about the performance. Thank you, Samsung, for giving us the proper chip this time around. Please don't take it away next year. It's been too long, really, but I'll let you off. It's worth touching on price very quickly because in the UK, the 256 gigabyte version of the S23 Ultra with eight gigabytes of RAM is £1,249. And if you want to upgrade to the 512 gig of storage and 12 gig of RAM version, that's £1,399. So again, a bit like the iPhone, it's a very, very expensive flagship phone, which we're getting used to, unfortunately. However, Samsung is incredibly generous when it comes to their trading price prices and some of their discounts. At the time of filming, they'll give you up to £600 off your S23 Ultra based on a trade-in, and you don't have to trade in a Samsung phone. It can be, for example, an iPhone. Basically, I got the cost of this one down to £649, and that was based on trading in my S22 Ultra, but also a free upgrade to the 512 gig version. When it comes to the design of this phone, it's pretty much the S22 Ultra with two 
fairly small differences. The first one is that it is a fraction taller, but you really have to put them side by side to notice that. And the second one relates to the display. And that's basically a less curved display on the S23 Ultra. So the S22 Ultra curves a bit more on the edge here, which I never liked. I don't think many people did. So they've made the right decision in making it slightly flatter. But it really is pretty much the same phone as the S22 Ultra. I do love the new colors. That sky blue color that I went for, I think is absolutely stunning. And going back to the display, I do think it's the best on the market. If you haven't seen an S series display in person, particularly the Ultra, you need to see it. It's so lovely and vibrant. It's not too saturated like Samsung displays of old. The other thing that is the same as last time is the S Pen, which is still there and, as far as I'm concerned, is still fairly gimmicky. And I know I'll get heat from this from Samsung fans, but I don't care. I, well, firstly, I'm not a note taker. I'm not the sort of person who sits there and takes notes like this. It, it feels a bit, a bit ham-fisted, but if you do take notes like that and you like a little had to take notes on, then it's great for that. I think the other features that you can use this for, like, you know, remotely taking photos and things, like I say, it's a bit gimmicky, I'm sorry. The fingerprint reader deserves special mention. I wish the iPhone had an underscreen fingerprint reader. I don't know why it doesn't. You can't see it. It works really flawlessly, and it just feels really natural. It's definitely worth mentioning the battery life, which is utterly fantastic. Samsung has done some stuff to this in terms of the display, but also, obviously, the chip as well inside to be a bit more battery efficient and it, well it definitely has done something because I haven't charged this phone for two days and three hours and I still have 23% battery remaining and apparently according to this a full charge will last me two days and 17 hours. It definitely feels better I think than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It seems to have a lot more stamina. However the biggest changes that Samsung has made to the S23 Ultra relates to to these. We have a 200 megapixel sensor in the S23 Ultra, which is utterly bonkers, but also it gives the Samsung marketing team lots of stuff to talk about. So all of the adverts for this phone talk about these 200 megapixels. And that can be a bit misleading unless you know what's going on. So by default, it won't shoot at 200 megapixels. It basically takes those 200 megapixels and bins them down to a 12 megapixel image. And that's absolutely fine. You probably get a bit more detail, although side by side with the S22 Ultra it's not that obvious until you start zooming in and how often do you do that? So I wouldn't buy this phone thinking 200 megapixels equals amazing photos. But everything else that's going on inside this phone, from the lenses to the sensor to the, all the processing that the software does, do result in very nice photos. And I took this phone to the Lake District in the UK over the weekend and that is perfect for the S23 Ultra. If you're shooting landscapes and still, you know, serene subjects, then it pulls off some fantastic imagery. And you can see the result of that in these photos from the weekend. They just look fantastic. I haven't done anything to these. These are straight out of the camera, no edits whatsoever. You still get the crazy zoom options with the S23 Ultra, but there are some issues with this. I find that 30X is pushing it. You have to have a really steady hand. Anything from 1, obviously, to 10x looks really good, but 30, and certainly 100, 100, guys, actually, is absolutely unusable 99.9% .9 of the time. I can't get a decent image at 100x, no matter what I do. One thing I am impressed with is the performance of the selfie camera. So they have done quite a bit to this in terms of the low light capabilities, and I can confirm that it does perform better when you're in fairly rubbish lighting conditions. But just the overall images that you get from that selfie camera are fantastic. There is just one issue still, which is the shutter lag. So if you're taking photos of fields and mountains and things that don't move, the S23 Ultra does a fantastic job. However, if you want to take a photo of a fast-moving subject, like a child or a dog, for instance, then you're going to struggle. If the lighting's okay, and if you catch a bit of luck, you do get fantastic images, like this one you can see of my dog, Eddie. But, as you can see in these other photos, it did take me quite a few attempts to get that decent photo. 
The other thing that's really annoying is that when you take a photo from the lock screen, so if you double press the power button, that takes you into the camera app without having to unlock the phone. Fantastic. So you take your photo, you then review your photo to see what it looks like, and then you want to go back and take another photo. Uh, no, it takes you back to the lock screen. So you kind of go photo, review, lock screen, and then you have to keep doing this thing over and over again. It was just very annoying during the weekend. When it comes to video, this is the video from the selfie cam, which is passable. This is the mic sound as well. I haven't treated it at all. It's straight out of the phone. When it comes to the video from the main camera, it's 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 not great, let's be honest. The king of video, I think at the moment, is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This has a lot to beat when it comes to that. As you can see from this footage in the lakes, it's a bit choppy, the stabilization isn't great, the colors are a bit muted, it's just not that impressive. I do think Samsung needs to do better when it comes to video. And I will be pitching the iPhone 14 Pro Max against the S23 Ultra in a few days time, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss that. But overall, the camera is still slightly flawed in a couple of annoying areas, but it does produce very nice images. So, can I recommend the S23 Ultra to people in the UK? Yes. Samsung has fixed the biggest problem with the S22 Ultra, which was the performance, and the camera, like I've just said, even though there are some annoying quirks with it, it's a fantastic camera, it's got the best display on the market, the battery performance is fantastic, and even though the S Pen is a bit gimmicky, it's different enough and interesting enough to be a bit of a differentiator. And although this doesn't beat my phone of last year, which was the Pixel 7 Pro, it does come mightily close thanks to those fantastic trade-in deals. Samsung, you are back in the game when it comes to the S23 Ultra in the UK. I can't believe what we've been missing out on in terms of performance, but now I know, and it is absolutely fantastic. If you're still considering between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, remember that I will be pitching them against each other in the next few days, so make sure you subscribe. But in the meantime, keep watching for a link to my most recent iPhone 14 Pro Max review.